Hello and welcome, my name is Hayden Fowlson from FowlsonTutorials.com and today we're going to be looking at anti-aliasing Z-passes in Blender 2.8, Eevee and Cycles. Now for those of you who are not aware of what a Z-pass is, a Z-pass is essentially just a render pass that renders out the depth information of a scene. So for example, if I press F12 on this scene here, go into my compositor, use nodes, and you'll see that there's an output on the render layers node called depth. If I grab this output, sorry, let me just get my viewer and a reroute. Oh, and for those of you who don't know, you can press V to increase or decrease the size of the screen, or you can just use these little widgets here. Excellent, so with the depth output of the render layer going into our composite, we also wanna probably put this through a normalized node. We'll see that our depth information is rendered. Now this is fantastic for doing a whole lot of things, such as combining two different objects together using their Z depth information, which can be done via the Z combine node. But more often than not, it's just a great and fast way of doing atmospherics. Sure, it may not be as great or as versatile as Eevee's volumetrics or Cycle's volumetrics, but it's a lot less computer intensive. It can also be great for blending shapes together while compositing. But the problem is that if I zoom in on this uh, render, we'll see it's not anti-aliased. And what that means is that there's these very harsh edges, as you can see here, very harsh. So if I was to combine this with, let's say, the actual render, so let me just mix it in to the real render. you'll see we're getting these really awful artifacting. And that's because the Z-Pass isn't anti-alias, which is annoying in some cases. For some uses, that's perfectly fine. But for more compositing uses, especially when you're compositing into a scene that's already anti-aliased, it can cause a few headaches. So today I'm going to show you how to do a Z-Pass that is anti-aliased in Cycles and the EV Engine, and a few tips and tricks along the way. Also, I'd like to apologize for my absence as of late. I've been having computer issues, but I think that's just about fixed now. One of the drives was completely kaput and uh, needs to be replaced. The SSD is fine, I've done all the checks. Uh, it's just the D drive, essentially, and I don't know what's happening there. It was doing a disk check on boot, even though there wasn't one queued. And then it just, I don't know, fried the whole computer until I completely physically unplugged the disk from the computer. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. To do a anti-aliased Z path, it's actually quite simple. All that we're going to do is we're going to turn on a function known as a mist pass. Now, for those of you coming from 2.79 and below, you'll understand and know exactly what a mist pass is. A mist pass back in pre 2.8 uh, was usually turned on in the world settings. Now, if I go to the world settings, you'll see that there is no such option. Although I could be mistaken, it's been a while since I've used 2.79 and below. But there is no option for that mispass. And some may assume it's not there. Well, in actual fact, it is there in both Cycles and EV. All they have to do is actually navigate up to our view layer, come down here to Passes, and we'll see that just below Combine, there is a really nice little mispass right here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this mispass you'll notice straight away that our render layers node has updated to show that the output now has a mist. 
And then if we come down to our world settings, we'll also see that that is also being updated to reveal our list part. So yeah, a little bit hidden, but quite easy to find. So now if we render this scene again, and then I run this mispassed through this normalized node, we'll see that it takes on a much more softer image. None of those jagged edges, which is fantastic. However, we would like to now manipulate the mispass because as you may have noticed, there's a bit of a difference between the depth and the mispass. Now we don't generally have to run the mist through a normalize. It works perfectly fine if it doesn't, but just for this example, I'm going to be doing just that. Now, a good way to control the mispass is by using these two little values here. Start, which essentially is telling how far from the camera it should start rendering or not rendering, calculating the mist or the Z depth. And the end, which is, well, exactly what you would assume it is, it is the depth of the mist, so how far it extends into space from the camera view. A good way to replicate and control this value is by setting the start value to something like zero, and then setting the depth value to a driver. So we're actually gonna set up a very quick driver, so I'm just gonna add a empty, single arrow empty, just scale that up a little bit, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my depth, add driver, and then I'm going to get rid of that plus 25. Make sure that the expression is just var because our var is here. And then we're going to set var to a distance variable. And the distance is going to be between uh, the empty itself and our camera. Excellent. So that's reporting a distance value of 44.9, which is great. Now, if we render this out and go back to my compositing, we should see that the depth and the mispasses are quite similar now. So they're actually picking up the same sort of information this is because our normal, sorry, this is because our depth is set to just about the end of the scene. This is very versatile and useful method of setting the depth because if our scene was to stretch, let's say, into Z space, now if we were just to leave this empty here and render it out, let me just get a few of the other things into view and increase the clip distance. If we were to render this out now, go back to my compositing node, you'll see that the depth, the Z depth, picks all that up. But if we do mist, we should see that the sphere and the cube have all but disappeared. But because we've rigged, not rigged, because we've added a driver to the depth, all that we have to do is a very simple transform on our empty to the end of the screen or to the end of the scene. Now, when we render it again, the mist pass is pretty much indistinguishable from the depth pass. Now, of course, you could do a little bit of tweaking here and there in terms of values, but for all intents and purposes, this is working just fine. So, no matter how long or deep your scene is, no matter how many elements, you can always move this value here to make sure that you're getting the best sort of mispass and close enough to the actual Z pass. It's a bit of trickery, but for compositing terms, this is a fantastic alternative because we're actually getting an anti-alias Z depth information. Now, if you were doing this in cycles, I didn't forget about cycles, don't worry. 
Uh, if I just change the render engine to cycles, you'll see that if I go down to my environment, we still have that mispass enabled and it's still set to 47 because all the settings actually um, follow through into the cycles. And if I render this now, let me show you the rendering. Oh, cycles, so slow. It's actually gotten a lot faster in recent builds though. I remember when it used to take painfully long time. Okay, so as you can see in cycles, there's very, very little difference in terms of the mispass. So still very, very usable. Uh, but yes, I hope this hasn't been too rambly and I, I would like to apologize again for my tardiness in terms of my video schedule. I hope this makes up for it in terms of just you know, very interesting tidbits on Blender and other software. If you'd like to see more, please head over to foulsandfantasy.com. I have a whole page dedicated to tutorials. Also, if you'd like, you can check out some of my Gumroad items as well as I'm releasing comic very, very soon, hopefully by the end of this month. Uh, if you would like to check out the page on my website, foulsandfantasy.com, the Legion of Fire, I think you're going to be very excited. I'm really happy with how it's coming along. I've been hustling for a couple of weeks now trying to get the first three chapters to a state that I'm happy with and then I'm going to release uh, well start the release schedule and I would be honored and thrilled if you would like to come along for the ride so just head over to thousandfantasy.com and subscribe to our newsletter we're having a few issues with them our newsletter provider but that should be sorted out within the coming days thank you so much for watching this is Hayden Thousand from ThousandFantasy.com, signing off.